So speaking about uh, terrorism aviation insurance within 10 minutes will be challenging. So I will start immediately with uh, a few uh, legal framework. As an introduction, we spoke a lot about 9-11 uh, this morning. So we can definitely uh, assess that an aircraft is considered as a weapon uh, by the terrorism. So 9-11 is a clear illustration of that. Uh, it was the case before. Huh? We had another example of a flight from uh, Air France flight from Algiers to Paris. Uh, in 1994, uh, who was uh, reputed to be used as a, as a weapon to, to, to crash on Paris at this time. So uh, uh, aircraft can also be considered as a target because uh, when you think about the Ukraine missile, you can also consider that aircraft is a target, not only a weapon. So just to confirm that, uh, I just had a look at the RMS terrorism model. And uh, we can see here that two out of these scenarios are uh, using some, some aircraft as well. So we can clearly say that uh, aviation is concerned about this, uh, this very challenging topic of today. So what about the, f the, the legal frameworks? Uh, I will briefly try to, to have a look at uh, two or three legal frameworks uh, just in order to, to qualify what is the framework and then what are the insurance solutions because uh, of course the uh, insurance solutions are also linked to some legal frameworks, uh, taking into consideration that in terms of aviation, uh, aviation is by, by law international. We go from one point to the other, we travel all around the world. So it's very complicated to regulate uh, a claim or even to envisage to, to find some uh, insurance solutions through all these legal frameworks. Ne nevertheless, it's what is done on the market, and I will try then, after the legal framework, to give you the existing uh, coverage in aviation. So the French legal framework is very, I would say, very simple. It's not, uh, not an habit to have simple solutions in France, but at this time we have some. So we have a law passed in, uh, 80, in 1986, uh, so terrorism must be covered under all property damage insurance policies. That's the legal framework uh, used by France. That's why we have the Gariat pool, etc., etc. So what about aviation? So aviation is excluded as a, as a major risk, is excluded by, by, uh, of this obligation. Nevertheless, not for the small risk uh, above 1 million euros. Don't ask me why, but that's uh, the Sarkozy law uh, was, uh, was confirmed like that. And so we, we have this obligation to, to cover the smaller risk. Non-commercial smaller risk are covered by law. All the rest is uh, under the open market, I would say. The bodily injuries would be taken uh, into consideration by a special fund uh, called FGTI. Maybe my colleague will speak about that later on. So that's the legal framework. Uh, not very sophisticated, but it has the merit of existing like that. European Union now. Uh, if you look at the consideration of European Union, it was driven after 9-11, uh, of course, so there were a lot of study groups uh, having a, a lot of uh, issuing a lot of papers, and they have today a regulation uh, dated April 2004, trying to impose a minimum insurance uh, coverage for passengers of an aircraft and for other victims out of the aircraft. Because when an aircraft uh, crashes, unfortunately the passengers are concerned of course, but uh, you can also have some scenarios where you have other victims. So the, the, the concern of the European Union was to try to impose or to, 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 to justify that there should be a minimum requirement of indemnification and then of insurance. So that's very technical, I will not go into the detail. Depending on the mass of the aircraft, let's consider smaller aircraft and larger aircraft, uh, you, you, you will have a differentiation in this amount expressed into special drawing rights. So we converted it into dollar because special drawing rights, it's not a common currency used by all of us. So you can consider that roughly uh, each and every victim should have a minimum indemnification of 340,000 dollars. That's what the European Union uh, wants to impose for all the internal flights within the European Union, but also for foreign uh, aircraft entering into the, the space of uh, European Union. 
that's the regulation. That means that for, uh, in respect of this liability, we can consider that for, uh, depending on the side of, uh, of the aircraft, you should buy, the operator, the air airline should buy an insurance coverage up to 1 billion uh, euro in order to, to cover that. Gives you a first figure. The US legal framework, of course, USA was uh, marked by the 9-11 uh, uh, event. So uh, they created, uh, the market was completely exhausted at this time. And uh, there is a correlation with the presentation of my colleague from Lloyd's, uh, because we can see immediately that uh, the market was, uh, was driven by this lack of capacity after 9-11. So the, the, the market capacity was completely down. And the government uh, of the United States decided to, to issue what they call the Terrorism Risk Insurance Act, TRIA. Uh, this TRIA gives the possibility to reconstitute to uh, rebuild an insurance market by very, very slow, small capacities. You can see it here. So this TRIA was renewed uh, from 9-11-2001 till now, and it was extended in 2015 for six years. So it will, uh, it will stop at the end of 2020. But you can see that we, we still have this, uh, this uh, method and this, uh, this system in force in the United States. And uh, this, uh, this organization is able today to, to substitute uh, to the open market, uh, but with very limited amount, between $100 million uh, uh, in 2015, it should go, it should go up <laughs> to $200 million by the end of two, uh, 2020. You, you can see the, the very limited uh, coverage that is uh, provided by this method. And uh, so the open market, of course, is very active, and uh, our Lloyd's colleagues are providing a, a, a big part of this open market. Not only, but they provide a big part of this open market. Considering the international legal framework, I will not go into deep details because it's very similar to the European one. I don't know who copied on who, but the ICAO uh, organization, International Civil Aviation Organization, was asked after 9-11 to uh, have a working group and to try to, to revisit the Rome Convention and the Montreal Convention uh, that are dedicated to uh, so international convention in, ca in case of, of crash of aircraft. And uh, so they adapted the situation and they more or less uh, tried to, to, to impose what was taken over by by the European Union, meaning an obligation of having a minimum indemnity uh, conducting to a market up to one billion US dollar for the, for the air airlines. So buying a one billion uh, uh, insurance policy, minimum. And the rest of the coverage should be granted through a special fund, very similar to the pollution fund uh, FIPOL, uh, maybe you know this fund uh, that was dedicated after some tankers uh, uh, losses, and this people uh, is going up to three billion dollars. So, uh, so the solution was to copy what was done for for uh, for uh, pollution to the aviation market. Uh, this were, this uh, convention was never ratified, so don't lose a lot of time about that. So it was uh, it's a good proposal, but never ratified because so far. Uh, it is uh, uh, the open market is able to provide some solutions. So what about these solutions? Uh, these solutions are, I would say, a little bit complex concerning either the aircraft or the passenger or the third parties. So we have different scheme of coverages uh, depending on what is uh, damaged in a certain way. So. As a basic, you can consider that uh, terrorism and war risk is excluded from all the traditional insurance coverage, uh, but there is a buyback and a write back of all these uh, warranties through some uh, uh, very specific AVN, what we call the aviation uh, clause. AVN uh, clause are dedicated to write back all these coverages with the exception of the nuclear. Nuclear is never covered back so nuclear is considered by the aviation market as non-insurable, and so you can write back all the other types of, uh, of, of events, but not nuclear, because uh, the problem of accumulation could be huge, uh, considering an aircraft 
uh, having a, a nuclear contamination somewhere and uh, crossing a lot of, uh, of countries uh, would be a, a very, a very huge, uh, huge claim, so you can never find a co coverage for that. Except of that, you can uh, cover the hull, so the aircraft as such. This coverage is, uh, is granted most often by the London market, not only by the London market, and so uh, you, can, uh, you can cover that with exception of the nu nuclear and dirty bombs. And there is also a sort of a sharing between the traditional market and the war market in the case when we do not know the, the origin of the, of the claim. And this is not a theoretical example. We have a lot of examples of that. The Malaysian, the disappeared Malaysian aircraft MH307 is only uh, 70 is under this uh, clause because uh, so far there is a sharing between the war market and the and the open market, just because we do not know what happened exactly. So the the, the aircraft was paid by the insurance market, but 50% by the war, war, war market and 50% by the the open market. Uh, we have others, Metrojet, uh, uh, Egypt Air are other examples, so it's not a theory, and as uh, aircrafts are used as a, as a weapon today, we are more and more uh, in face of these kinds of situation. In terms of liability, in terms of liability, we cover, of course, all the passengers, the luggage, and the, the cargo embedded in the, in, the, in the aircraft that would be covered up to limits up to Two billion, two billion of euro is what we can easily uh, find on the open market as a co traditional coverage. Uh, concerning the war risk, so this, uh, this famous Avian 52 clause, that's the liability towards the people not in the in the plane. Uh, so in, ca in case of a World Trade Center, for example, the market also through a first line of 500 million and a second line in excess would also give a capacity of two billion. So that's the level of coverage that you can easily find on the, on the market today. Of course, there are some risks for the operator, for the airlines, and for the passengers. We are all passengers. This, uh, this uh, coverage can be canceled within between 48 and seven days in case of, a, of an issue somewhere in the world. The policies, the war policies are, it's possible to cancel them. And there is a, even an automatic termination clause in case of an outbreak of a, of a war between the five uh, major countries uh, mentioned here. Okay, that's not the topic of today, but nevertheless, it's just to, to give you the sensibility of this risk. You are covered, but if there is a major event, the day after, all the coverage worldwide could fall immediately from one day to the other. Concerning airport manufacturer service provider, the same scheme of coverage will, uh, will will be applied. The limits are a little bit lower because the uh, accumulation risk is considered to be to be smaller. But no, more or less, you can find the capacity in war and so in terrorism up to 1.5 billion US dollar on the on the war risk market. So that's it for the coverages. And now I, I tried to with my friends of uh, yes I. I've the last one. <laughs> so the scenario of Roissy Charles de Gaulle, we just uh, try to, to consider if tomorrow there, there is a claim in Roissy Charles de Gaulle, how will it work? Because of course aviation will be, uh, will be concerned, but also property, uh, casualty, etc., etc. So you can see here that it will not be easy. So the lawyers will have a lot of work and they will be happy for a few years to, to regulate this kind of claims. But the properties will be uh, indemnified through the Gariat mechanism with the, st the French state in case of uh, overpassing 2.5 billion, approximately euro. Uh, no public coverage for aircraft and the accumulation in Roissy Charles de Gaulle is huge. Uh, well, the value of an aircraft is 100 million dollars, so you can easily see that 10, 10 aircraft is 1 billion, etc., etc. And the passenger will be protected through this fund. So the message here would be that we have an open market up to two billion, more or less, two, between two and three billion. And one of the gap I identified personally on my market, and if you take this scenario, the first gap is the lack of coverage in excess of these three billion, because we have some coverages 
granted through pools organization, but not in only line of business, in all lines of business. So I think we should also think about a solution above uh, the existing market capacities that are fragile because, uh, as I mentioned, within one or two days we can cancel everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christophe.